Yeah, you're going to read questions. Hi, uh, my name is Matthew Hanrich. I'm a veteran with the United States Navy. Uh, I've been in 19 years, 20 years next year when I plan on possibly retiring, but maybe I'll go to 22 years. Uh, I'm, my date of birth is April 5th, 1980. Um, and I've served in Afghanistan, uh, Djibouti, Africa, El Salvador, and I've done two deployments on an aircraft carrier. Now here's Jacob with the questions. All right, so um, jogging memory, tell you about how you came to the service and um, what did you do when when you enlisted and where were you living at the time and why did you join? Why did you pick the branch that you joined? Okay, uh, it was uh, end of September of 2001. <laughs> I was working as a welder in Appleton, Wisconsin. I was living in Menashe at the time. Uh, got laid off from work, and I was, while I was searching for another job, I ran across a recruiter, not a Navy recruiter, but a job recruiter, and he ex he talked about a time when he was in the Navy. We, we started talking about the, the Twin Towers collapsing and both the firefighters, and he talked about when he was in the Navy, he was a firefighter on an aircraft carrier, and... From that moment, I thought that's what I wanted to do. Um, actually, I knew that's what I wanted to do. And so right when I left his office, I went and talked to the recruiter. And 18 days later, I was in boot camp for the United States Navy. All right, so my second question is experience. Like, what did you do? What wars did you serve in? Where were you? What was your job? Did you see combat? Were there many um, casualties in your unit? Uh, so my life in the Navy was on a ship for two deployments. I worked on the flight deck of an aircraft carrier, the USS John F. Kennedy. I was an aviation boatswain's mate handler, and then I was a plane captain for my second deployment. Uh, my third deployment, I was with a P-3 squadron, and we went to El Salvador where we did counter-drug ops. My fourth deployment, I was with a CB battalion. I was in the intelligence officer, and we went to Afghanistan. We did a six-month deployment at Camp Leatherneck in Afghanistan. And my fifth and final deployment that I just did uh, less than a year ago, uh, went to Djibouti, Africa, and I worked with the Horn of Africa uh, leadership team that's in Djibouti at, on Camp Lemonnier. And... Uh, my job was the non-commissioned officer in charge of the intelligence directorate. All right, so my second question is, what was, what was your life? You said you were um, in Africa, and what did you do on your spare time there? And um, did you have any um, friends that you um, did anything with? Uh, yeah, so spare time there. Uh, so we were limited on off-base activities. Uh, in reality, there was really none. There was only a few places you could go to. I didn't like going to them. Uh, in my spare time, I would exercise. Uh, being a chief petty officer, there is a place on base called the Chief's Mess where the other chiefs and senior enlisted people gather. Uh, I would spend a lot of time there just socializing, uh, hanging out. Uh, then on Sundays was our days off and I would spend time watching movies and just relax and get stuff to eat at uh, some of the local restaurants on base, which were just small fast food restaurants. But it, it was a taste of home, so it was something nice. So. And um, you said you're still not um, um, done yet. You're not retired yet. Well, set, and one of my questions is after service. So I'm just going to ask you, what do you plan to do after service? Uh, when I retire, uh, I want to retire in the next one to three years. Uh, after that, my so being a res I'm a reservist at the moment. I started off active duty for seven years, and I've been reservist for the last 12 years. Uh, but as a reservist, you already have a civilian job, so I would just roll into that more. Um, I might help out with the chief's mess a little bit in my retirement, but for the most part, I would just – be separated, obviously, from any kind of a naval service, but I might help out with, like, the VFW and stuff like that. Okay. And what are you 
looking back, did you, looking back or looking ahead, did your military experience influence your thinking about war, about the military in general? Uh, not really. Uh, today's wars are nowhere near as graphic as the wars in the past. So in reality, people's thoughts of wars were based on a period of time where they were way more graphic. Don't get me wrong. There are still a lot of graphic images and there's deadly weapons, deadlier weapons than there was back at the time. The, the thing is that the U.S.'s counter defense is a lot better at this, at the moment. So God forbid we ever have to go to a full out war. Yes, you will experience stuff like that again in life. But at the moment with the counterinsurgency wars that we fight, it's not as graphic. So my concept of going to war when I was in Afghanistan was not in a combat mode. I was as intelligence officer. I was on base the whole time. I really didn't go out in the field. Uh, we had troops that would go out from the CB battalion. Um, they experienced uh, conflict a couple times. Uh, one of the most graphic ones was they took fire, but nobody was injured, Se severely injured. Somebody was slightly injured, but that was the extent of the combat that I kind of experienced. Rocket attacks, which they shoot rockets at the base, but for the most part, their accuracy is not good. And it's rare where it actually kills somebody. It does happen, but yes, it's rare. Well, um, that's all the questions I have. Um, thank you for no problem. Thank you. Yourselves and thank you for your service. Yep, no problem. Thank you.